When it comes to BlackBerry stock and whether you should buy or sell, based on what we're seeing right now, you should definitely. What's up everyone, Conrad Newfeld here, and today we're talking about BlackBerry's surge in stock price and whether you should buy, sell, or hold. And yeah, I realized that that intro was a bit of a jerk move, but there's a reason for it. Because like most things, while having the right answer is important, also understanding why the answer is the way it is, is just as important. Because believe it or not, there are some factors that have nothing to do with BlackBerry driving the stock price up, including some commonalities with GameStop. Let's first talk about what BlackBerry has done right to get to where it is. BlackBerry over the last few years hasn't really done anything special. In fact, a business partner of mine who still uses a BlackBerry phone, yes, that really is still a thing, gets bugged all the time by his friends for the fact that he's using this BlackBerry phone. Well, I mean his friend. He only has one because he uses a BlackBerry. <laughs> All joking aside though, BlackBerry hasn't really done much. They have been for the most part rebuilding. That is, until the end of last year. Back in 2018, BlackBerry sued Facebook for patent infringement, claiming that the technology that Facebook was using in their messaging app was an infringement on the patents that BlackBerry held. And as these things generally take a lot of time to wind their way through the courts, it wasn't until December of 2020 that the judges finally ruled in favor of BlackBerry. This was a huge win for BlackBerry, and as a result, BlackBerry's stock surged more than 100%. But that wasn't all. BlackBerry had back-to-back -back wins in December because in that same month they announced their partnership with AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, to develop their cloud-based platform for smart vehicles. So, good news story after good news story, and speculators eventually know that profits are going to follow. The stock, in fact, would go on to get so much attention that stock market regulators actually made a formal request to BlackBerry to ask them if they knew what was going on. And that's why BlackBerry had to announce that it was not aware of any material undisclosed corporate developments and has no material change in its business affairs that has not been publicly disclosed that would not account for the recent increase in the market price or trading volume of its common shares. Which is basically BlackBerry's way of saying, we've got no idea. I mean, we've got great news, but the real rewards of that great news hasn't manifested yet. We haven't realized those rewards yet. So all of this is just speculation. So what else is going on then? Well, it's actually something that we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to because it's something that we're probably gonna see a lot more of in 2021. There has always been speculation in the market. That's not new. But what is new is there are more and more self-managed traders, also known as retail investors, that are self-managing their own investment funds through things like Wealthsimple, Quest Trade, and Robinhood. And this is not gonna come as a surprise to, but not all of them have a wealth of experience in stock trading. And that by itself is not a bad thing. If you're out there actively taking a, a role in managing your investments and you're out there learning, that's fantastic. And honestly, just like this humble little YouTube channel that I've started, you've gotta start somewhere. But what it does mean is that these investors are more likely to be speculative in nature because they won't necessarily understand the fundamentals in a deep or sometimes even a surface level way. I learned this lesson myself when I was 16. When I was 16, I really, really wanted to invest my own money. But of course, as a 16 year old, you couldn't invest yourself. So I would actually give my money to my dad to invest on my behalf with the stocks that I would direct him to invest in. And so one summer when I was 16, I pulled together my, my savings from all the jobs that I had worked in, in, in the summer. And I gave that money to my dad and I told him to invest in some stocks. And I honestly can't even remember which stock I invested in, but I do know how it played out. The stocks rose in value and I thought to myself, damn, I'm good. Look at those stocks rise. I've like doubled my money. This is fantastic. But I didn't sell. Just before I was about to, the stock that I had picked fell slightly. And I thought, ah, oh, dang it, I should have sold it when I was on its peak. Well, if I wait long enough, it'll go back up. And then the stock dropped some more. And then I thought, oh man, if only I had sold when it was higher up. Well, I might as well wait to get my returns back. And then the stock dropped to where I had purchased it for. And I thought, well, frick, I didn't go through this whole thing just to like end up with where I started. So I'm gonna hold on to it and wait for it to go up. I mean, which other way could it go? It went down. So now my money was worth less than what I had put in. And I thought, well, there's no way in hell I am gonna be selling my stock on the low end. I wanna wait till it goes up. And then the stock continued to drop. In fact, it continued to drop to the point where there was basically no way that it was coming back and my money was left at 10% of the value of what it originally was because I was investing solely on what I thought that stock was gonna do. 
I learned a valuable lesson. Our intuition, our gut feeling can truly be a good thing. But when we invest in the stock market like 16 year old Conrad on intuition alone, our decisions may not be as guided as they probably should be. So when it comes to Blackberry, we've got good news on good news and speculators start to really love this deal. What else we got? Well, we also had a pandemic that had two effects on this story. The first effect is that we had a whole lot of people at home, a whole lot of bored people, and they were looking for something to do. So why not the stock market and why not get more involved and learn how to invest? The investment platform Robinhood, for example, which as of late has been mired in controversy, including an investigation and charges by the SEC, picked up more than 3 million new users in just the first quarter of 2020 alone. To boot, many of these new investors were millennials that statistically are prone to take on more risky investments. Speculation is kind of their thing. In fact, because of that, there is a growing list of objectors to these online investment platforms, saying that these investment platforms are essentially gamifying the investment process and potentially hooking young people on the feeling of these high-risk investments. At the end of the day, there are real-world consequences to investing. To add on to that, in a recent study, those under 34 that self-manage their own funds were more than willing to admit that they were not very confident in the decisions that they were making with their investments. So we've got a few pieces of the puzzle here. We've got good news with BlackBerry that helped jump the stock up initially. We've got more retail investors or self-managed funds than ever before. And those retail investors have a higher propensity to invest speculatively. But what are they investing? And that brings us to the second effect that the pandemic had. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that your financial situation could take a rapid turn at any moment. So while governments started printing more and more money to try to stimulate the economies, Canadians and North Americans started taking that money and jamming it right into their pockets to try to create a safety net. Savings rates went through the roof in North America, with some quarters of the year hitting savings rates of up to 28% in Canada, and Americans weren't that much further behind. As a result, Canadians and Americans are sitting on a mountain of cash, with Canadians having saved about $150 billion just during the pandemic alone. And that is another piece of the puzzle. You've got the initial good news story that helped jump the BlackBerry stock. You've got more retail investors than ever before willing to make speculative investments and they're currently sitting on the most amount of cash that they have ever had and they're looking for some place to put it. But why did these investors pick BlackBerry? Well, just like GameStop, BlackBerry was singled out by the subreddit, Reddit's Wall Street Bets. And from there it grew additional momentum. That momentum in turn got the attention of day traders and institutional investors, which then seemed to confirm to these retail investors that they were onto something. And that cycle continued. As a consequence, the stock began to rise so fast that regulators actually had to jump in and halt the trading of the stock temporarily until they could figure out what was going on. Unlike BlackBerry, however, GameStop was not selected by Reddit because of its good news stories, but rather as an attempt, which appears to have worked, at punishing a hedge fund manager that was betting against GameStop. So all that being said, what's in BlackBerry's future. The truth is BlackBerry does have a lot going for them and if executed properly, they may see the profits necessary to support a higher evaluation. But based on their fundamentals right now, the price is just not supported. And that's something that's being echoed by a lot of analysts who have since downgraded their valuation of the stock, saying that BlackBerry is ultimately gonna fall by the end of the year. Now that doesn't mean that the journey is over. In fact, probably far from it. And there's some people calling out for stock prices of $50 and $100. And if there's enough people that believe that, this BlackBerry stock could continue to see a rise for at least the short term. But if I was an owner of BlackBerry stock right now, I would probably be selling it. Now I'm not licensed as a financial planner. So everything I'm saying here is for entertainment purposes only. But the 16 year old Conrad in me knows that if the stock evaluation doesn't make sense, it's either because of A, you don't know what you're investing in, which can be dangerous in the long run because you can't be lucky forever, or B, the stock evaluation doesn't make any sense because the stock evaluation's priced at a level that doesn't make any sense. My fear for some of these millennials and others that have invested into this BlackBerry stock and the excitement and the rush of it rising so fast is that they're gonna learn the same lesson that I had to learn the hard way when I was 16. Because if the massive amount of buying was able to drive the price up, then the reverse can also be true that a massive amount of selling can drive the price down. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, hitting the bell notification so you're alerted when new videos come out, liking this video, and sharing it.